Hey everyone, Charles Masulia here. As some of you know, I'm a Spencer shooting enthusiast, and I've been asked by others to make a short video to show how I shoot blanks out of my reproduction Spencer rifle. I've owned about six of the reproductions from Army Sport, and most of the folks in my reenactment unit use them. Uh, it's an excellent reproduction weapon and will work great and is a lot of fun to shoot blanks out of, but there's some tips and tricks that will really make your experience so much better. And so that's what I'm going to show you today. These are the blanks that we'll be using today. They're from Veteran Arms LLC. They're injection molded plastic that are designed to be filled with uh, 13 to 15 grains of black powder and a 209 shotgun primer. This is what I'm going to be using, empty ones of course, to work through uh, some of the hints and tricks here in our video. One of the most common issues that we hear folks uh, encounter with using uh, blanks in their Spencer rifle is with the insertion of the magazine tube over the blanks. This is particularly uh, problematic sometimes with the plastic blanks and it's not so much due to the blanks as it is the magazine tube. Magazine tube as it comes from the factory is straight and has no flare at the end uh, and that uh, sharp straight end sometimes will tend to catch on the rim of the cartridge as it's being inserted there and make it hard to put this uh, magazine tube back into the uh, into the rifle and so what we want to do is flare out this magazine tube just slightly that will prevent that hang up when you go to insert the tube and I'll show you how we do that to flare the magazine tube you only need a couple of items uh, you need the tube obviously and you need something to flare it with. I like to use um, a taper drill bit. Uh, it's tapered out enough that when you insert it, it's just larger than the opening at the end of the magazine tube. You can also use a step drill bit, uh, same sort of uh, thing. Or at a pinch, you could use the back end of a screwdriver, um, one with a small handle or a dowel that's been sort of tapered down on the end. Something that's just a little bit larger um, than the opening. And so all you want to do then is insert that that uh, tapered object, in this case the uh, taper bit, and give it a little tap uh, here. Now of course I've already done mine. It doesn't take much, just a little tap. Uh, you may want to turn it over to the side then so that it doesn't get distorted. Give it a little tap there and you'll slowly start to flare out the metal part of the tube. Take that, reinsert it into the stock and you just want to keep testing this until the tube um, is snug but not so tight that it can't be reinserted. But you want it to be snug against the uh, tube that's inside the uh, butt there. Once you've done that, uh, take your Dremel tool. Uh, I have a Dremel tool here that has a sanding drum on it with the uh, pusher pulled back. You can then just sand very lightly. You don't want to sharpen this edge. You just want to cut down the rough edge there um, around the inside of the tube. Or you could always use a piece of sandpaper um, and do it the old-fashioned way. And just knock off the sharp edge there and you'll notice a real improvement in the ability to be able to insert this tube uh, back into the magazine over the blanks. The other tip is that when you uh, put your ammunition into the butt and you get ready to uh, reinsert your magazine tube, uh, rather than holding the weapon down like this um, so that the muzzle is pointing down when you insert the tube, if you'll hold the weapon more level um, than the, uh, the magazine tube will insert. And sometimes you'll have to go back and forth slightly. You don't want to hammer on it, um, but, but you do it uh, with a little bit of uh, enthusiasm. And it'll go, uh, go right in. And that'll take care of that problem. One of the other commonly encountered problems with the Spencer, especially when shooting blanks, uh, but it can be a problem even with live ammunition, is the tension of the spring in that uh, magazine follower, the tube that we just were working with. The design of the Spencer makes it so that no matter what, um, no matter what you do to the weapon, there's always going to be more tension on that spring when you have a fully mo loaded magazine than there will be when the magazine is half empty. That additional tension is going to make the weapon harder to cycle at the beginning, say the first three rounds, 
than it will be to cycle the, the four following rounds if you have seven in the magazine. But there is something you can do uh, to help this process along, and that is to shorten the spring on the magazine too. Uh, we found that that actually um, improves the ability to cycle the weapon with both blanks and live ammunition, and it's a really simple fix. So take a look. To do this fix, just unscrew the uh, small screw, which holds the pusher here. That'll come out, and you'll be left with a long coil spring. Now, this coil spring, as it comes from the factory, is pretty long. It'll be stretched out, you know, this long, uh, and which really, when it's compressed all down in the uh, in the magazine tube here at the bottom when the magazine's loaded uh, is really too much pressure and so if you trim that spring back a little bit uh, you, oftentimes you'll notice an improvement in performance now you want to go slow here uh, we recommend you know if the, the spring is long uh, out to here somewhere start by cutting one coil at the time and then test uh, put the uh, put the pusher back on put some blank ammunition in the magazine and give it a try what we found though is that usually it requires cutting back, the spring does, to until it's um, anywhere from a half an inch uh, up to an inch and a half about longer uh, when it's uh, not stressed than the actual tube itself. So it's not, uh, not much longer than the uh, tube itself. Just enough to keep some tension on the pusher um, when, uh, when the magazine is not loaded. One uh, little caution here, when you get ready to reassemble this magazine tube, the pusher uh, has a screw here um, that stops the pusher from moving forward. There's actually two positions on this pusher. One is further back than the other, and one is designed to be used with the 5650 caliber, and the other for the smaller calibers, and if you get the two um, reversed, uh, in other words, the pusher um, screw is is not in the right location it can actually bind up in the uh, action when you when you run out of ammunition and will cause you all sorts of headaches until you figure out what what the problem is but uh, so keep an eye on that and be sure and put it, the screw back in the hole that it came out of next we're going to talk about the action itself and to do that I'm going to take the breech block out of my weapon to use as an illustration. Be sure when you take your breech block out that you use some sort of uh, screwdriver that fits the slot very tight and that you can really press down on so you don't strip the, uh, the head of the screw there and then another screwdriver to, to back it on out um, that is the proper size. One of the commonly encountered problems uh, with shooting blanks in a Spencer comes in um, it's actually cycling around out from the magazine into the chamber. And part of that comes from there being a very sharp edge on the top of the upper breech block, this piece here, uh, right along this edge. And I'll show you why that's a problem. I have the breech block sitting here in sort of what m might be uh, illustrative of the open position. You'll notice there's a cartridge here. This is the one that's fixing to go up into the chamber. And um, then the other cartridges would be feeding up from the magazine here and they'd be you know nose to end basically and when this action closes this corner this edge splits the gap between the nose of the following bullet and the one going into the chamber and actually this sh that point there has to push this cartridge forward into the chamber and simultaneously push this one back in, backwards slightly into the magazine as it closes. And so this um, edge here at the top of the uh, upper breech block uh, is an area where it can cause you trouble if that gouges or digs in too sharply into um, the cartridge and that that can happen even when shooting live ammunition too and so what will help is if you take a little emery paper and um, just take off the rough edges here uh, oftentimes they'll come from the factory very sharp here um, and so you want to get rid of that and it doesn't take much um, just take your emery paper and uh, and sort of knock off the uh, the rough edge and you can test your uh, action and see how that works but uh, you'll notice a uh, improvement in the cycling and especially uh, when shooting blanks which are lighter um, in other words they don't weigh as much as uh, 
as live ammunition and obviously don't have a bullet or hard object um, separating the two, the two pieces. The next part that we're going to take a look at and potentially adjust is the cartridge guide. And it's this piece here in front of the upper breech block. That piece uh, actually helps guide the cartridge um, from the magazine when it comes out up into position in the chamber. And it sort of rolls along the body of the cartridge sort of like this. And uh, I'll try to make an illustration uh, that will explain it a little better. Sometimes that cartridge guide, um, this part, is a little too tall. In other words, uh, it sticks up too much, particularly at the front end here, and that can affect the um, cycling of the rounds from the magazine into the chamber. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I may have to switch cameras here, but I'll show you how you can take care of that. Okay, here's where the cartridge guide comes into play. The breech block, I have an illustration here of how the breech block um, intersects with the barrel and the magazine tube here. Um, very crude illustration, but it gives you an idea. Basically, the cartridges come up from the magazine at a relatively steep angle, and they have to make a turn in order to go into the chamber of the barrel like this. And the cartridge guide, this part here, actually helps them do that. Um, by guiding the nose of the bullet in and then pivoting around and picking up the back end and moving it on into the chamber. And that's of course located in that area of your rifle there. Uh, the problem is that uh, sometimes these rifles come from the factory with this cartridge guide a little too tall. And oftentimes if you measure them with a caliper like this one here, you can measure how tall it is. Um, they will be 0.14 or 0.15 of an inch um, and they actually need to be around 0.12 especially on this leading edge here what happens is that if this guide is too tall the cartridge comes out of the magazine at too steep an angle and it sort of bangs into the top of the barrel and force is needed in order to close the action and get it to the cartridge to flip up in the barrel like that if it's too low, um, in other words the cartridge guide is too low, these will come up um, at an angle that's not as steep but that drags the bottom of the cartridge here along the barrel's edge at the bottom and again will hang up the cartridge going into the barrel. So if you're going to do this fix, I recommend filing down the leading edge along here of the cartridge guide go very slowly measure and put this breech block back into action and test it and eventually what you'll find is you'll hit a sweet spot um, in which the cartridge moves smoothly out of the magazine and right into the uh, chamber at the at the breech um, and that's what you want to achieve having done that uh, you'll find that the action is much smoother than it came from the factory there's an easy way to check and see whether you need to do any work on your cartridge guide or to check your progress as you're working on it. And that is to put the breech block back in the rifle and then cycle around through um, just gravity fed. To do that, take your rifle, remove the magazine tube that's in the rear and set it aside. Set the rifle up with a muzzle down on your workbench or work table and take a blank cartridge and stick it right in this magazine and then you want to work the action. It should cycle right in with no trouble. If you notice that your cartridge was hanging up when you tried to cycle the round through, do it again slowly this time. Put the blank cartridge in, open the action, and then watch right in the breech here. And you can actually see the cartridge as it's fed up to see if it hangs up anywhere on its way in. Uh, and that should tell you where you need to work, whether the, uh, the front or rear of that cartridge guide needs to be uh, filed down in order to get it to feed smoothly. Another thing that you can do is after you cycle it in, take the cartridge out and have a look at the cartridge itself. Um, you'll notice there 
uh, whether there are any gouges or really deep scratches on it and that could be an indication of where there's a problem. Uh, of course if the nose is, is gouged uh, near the top it may be because it's going up and having to hit the top of the barrel there and be flipped in. If there's scratches along the bottom of the cartridge case it may be because it's dragging on the bottom of the chamber as, it, uh, as the round goes in. Now when you use these plastic blanks to do that um, there's, it's not uncommon for there to be some light scratches and even for one of these cartridges um, to have a little piece peeled up uh, in an area where it goes in. It's not very big and it doesn't affect the, uh, the cycling much. That's just a function of this being soft plastic as opposed to brass and it won't show up when you use live ammunition or if you use blanks that are made out of brass. But in any case, mine cycles pretty smoothly. Um, this minor scratch here and, and little tiny bit of uh, raised plastic is, uh, is no problem, nothing to be worried about. At this point, there's good and bad news. If you have adjusted the cartridge guide so that the cartridges cycle through easily when gravity fed, and you've also done some of the other fixes. You've shortened the magazine spring, you've knocked off the rough edges on the upper breech block and those things. You've done what you can to slick up the action on your Spencer. The bad news is that when you get ready to shoot uh, either live ammunition or blanks, you have to use the cartridge follower, the spring-loaded uh, tube that goes in, in the magazine. What that does is that creates pressure on the cartridges that are in the magazine and it's going to make the first couple or three cartridges that you cycle through the, through the action harder to cycle than the following ones. And what you'll notice is the first couple or three, you'll actually have to work the lever sort of enthusiastically in order to get them to go ahead and cycle through um, much more so than you will the following four or three cartridges, uh, the last ones in the magazine. If that's a problem, um, you know, you can load the magazine with five rounds instead of seven and things will cycle relatively fast uh, in that way. But there's not a lot you can do about that. It's simply a function of the fact that the Spencer has this unique uh, spring-loaded uh, magazine tube um, and, and that's the way it works. There's one other little design issue with the Army Sport reproduction Spencers that's relatively easy to overcome but will improve your ability to shoot blanks. That is the alteration of the firing pin and potentially the firing pin spring. The upper breech block on the Spencer um, repeaters has this sliding cover. If you take that off you'll notice inside there's a pusher which is this piece here. That's inside. If you remove that you'll find a firing pin and a spring. Take the spring off and let's look at the firing pin for a second. The firing pin on these Army Sport reproductions is shaped like this. In other words, there's a flat portion at the rear and then the actual pin tapers down uh, to a point. The problem with that is that inside this breech block, the hole that the firing pin goes through, it's indicated here, is a straight hole and there's no taper to it. So what happens is that this firing pin moving back and forth, uh, essentially slamming back and forth inside the breech block, eventually can get shoulders beat into it uh, at about this area right here. And you'll notice uh, if you fired quite a lot of blanks or even sometimes even live ammunition that there's a raised bit of metal here that's actually been beaten back from moving back and forth um, through that hole. Um, optimally, the firing pin should have looked like this. You would have thought it would have been designed this way um, where it goes straight back and then is flat. I can see the problem there. It makes this a weak point right here. Um, this is an easy fix. Basically, take your little firing pin here and get some emery paper and sand that area down. Just squeeze it with your fingers right there towards the base where that uh, tapered part is and just sand it a little bit. It doesn't have to be much. All you just want to do is knock off any of these burrs that um, have started to form and 
this will just be a part of your regular maintenance. Uh, if you shoot a lot of blanks, you know, a couple of hundred rounds on a weekend, when you disassemble the weapon and clean it, go ahead and pull that firing pin out, check it and see whether it has any of those little burrs starting or it's starting to, to beat a shoulder on there. Um, if it does, you know, use a little emery paper, sand those down till they're smooth and you can't feel them with your fingernail when you run it over there, and you should be good to go. Uh, and it won't be every time. You won't have to do it every time. And eventually, you'll sand that pin down to the point where it stops um, hanging up or, or getting a shoulder beaten into it there. The only other little issue is actually the firing uh, pin spring itself. And I've owned about six of these Army Sport Spencers, and this certainly hadn't been the case with all of them, um, but on at least one, this tiny little spring... Um, it essentially was too weak and when compressed all the way um, it didn't stop the firing pin from traveling too far um, forward in in the um, channel here and so it really had a tendency to do this beating on the shoulders there and what I found was that um, I could substitute the spring with a spring out of a ballpoint pin uh, it fit perfectly um, the firing pin itself and it had more coils um, for the length than the one that came uh, from the factory and so I simply cut it off at a point where when compressed it would stop the firing pin um, from actually um, move, traveling all the way forward and banging this this tapered part into the inside of the breech block and it worked great um, it, it's an easy fix if you think you need it. Again, I only had to do that on one of my Spencers, but it's uh, it really was an improvement when I did that. Let's talk about some troubleshooting tips. First, cycle the action briskly or enthusiastically, especially when you have seven rounds inside. In other words, make it one motion. Open and close. Don't stop when you're open and then try to close it. That will make the round cycle in much easier than if you open it and then close it. Now of course mine is fairly slick but sometimes especially when there's seven rounds in the magazine if you open the action up and leave it open you can then have a hard time getting the action to close and getting this lever to go back into position. At that point you can try to wiggle it a little bit um, or you can give it a bump, which is usually do the trick. With your open hand, just bump the lever down. And I don't mean beat on it or stomp on it. Just give it a little bump. And usually that will overcome whatever uh, um, area is stuck there. And, uh, and you'll be able to close the action. Inserting the magazine tube. Once you've loaded your cartridges into the magazine, there's my seventh one. It's time to insert the magazine tube. Now if you hold this rifle straight up and down like this and try to insert the tube, it's going to be very hard to do, especially when using blank ammo, uh, which doesn't have a metallic uh, case. Better is to hold the weapon out level like this. And even then, you may have to be enthusiastic. Sometimes it'll stop, back it up, give it a little bump, and it'll go right on in. Again, you're not beating on it, don't bang on it, don't hit it against the tree, uh, or anything like that, but uh, just enthusiastically put it on in, and it should go in just fine. Opening a stuck action. Occasionally, you'll fire around, the hammer will fall, uh, and you'll retrieve the rifle, pull the hammer back to half cock and you can't get the action open. This is a function of using those 209 shotgun primers. They are a little softer than the primers that are used in live ammunition uh, but they're used in almost all of the blank ammo and sometimes occasionally the firing pin can move forward into the primer and actually stick forward into the soft primer. Um, sometimes it'll puncture all the way through although it's very rare um, usually it just is surrounded by the primer material and can't retract and so then you can't open the breech. Super easy fix. 
basically you can try to lower the hammer on the spit shell, give it a little push, uh, bump the hammer back and forth. Usually that will loosen up um, the firing pin and you'll notice that the slide comes back. You'll know then that the firing pin uh, has come back. If that doesn't work, you can always dry fire um, the, the rifle. The hammer will fall forward and hit the um, slide there and usually that little jolt uh, is all it will take. The uh, firing pin will come loose back up then and you'll be able to open the action up without any problem. Avoiding a double feed. The Spencer rifle has an extractor and not an ejector. The extractor extracts the spent cartridge from the chamber but it doesn't throw it free of the breech. And so you have to be careful that you orient the rifle in the proper position in order for the spent cartridge to fall out of the action and out of the way. Um, in order to do that, the Spencer relies on gravity. And so you want to be sure when you extract a uh, cartridge that the weapon is pointed up. And you'll see that when you do that, the spent cartridge is extracted and then gravity helps the cartridge fall free of the breech. If you don't do that, uh, and you actually try to cycle the action uh, in a lever or in a muzzle down position like this, what happens is that the extracted cartridge is extracted to a certain point, at which point the extractor can't pull on it or throw it free of the action, and it actually just falls right back down in the chamber. Of course, that causes problems when the next cartridge comes up from the magazine and runs right into the back of it, and that jams up the action. And I'm going to show you close up how that acts that happens by pointing the weapon down and cycling the action. Alright, let's see if we can demonstrate here. The rifle is pointed down. I'm going to open the action here slowly and you notice that the extractor starts to pull the cartridge, the spent cartridge up. At a certain point though it can't pull it anymore and the spent cartridge falls right back down into the chamber. Now watch what happens when I try to close the action. Here comes the next roundup from the magazine and bang, right into the back of the spent cartridge. And now the action is all hung up in this position. The only way to get out of this is then to take the magazine tube out, dump the magazine, which uh, sometimes will allow you to get this cartridge, uh, the stuck one here, to back back up and out the tube. Uh, and then with that out of the way, the uh, then you can open the action up and get the, uh, the spent cartridge out. But uh, this is a real problem and you can simply avoid this altogether by pointing the rifle up when you cycle the action as opposed to down. If you're out in the field and you have one of these double feed situations, sometimes you can't get that cartridge to go back down the magazine tube and you really just need to clear the thing. Uh, in that case, go ahead and dump the magazine uh, and then with a screwdriver, most of uh, most Spencer shooters are going to have one of these in their bag there. Take and lift up um, this guide here and with that lifted up you can shake free um, the cartridge that's coming out of the magazine. Uh, you still have the one that's in the chamber there but with that cartridge out of the way you can close the action and then let's see extract the spent one. If you shoot a lot of ammunition at one time, you may encounter a situation where when you go to open the action and extract the spent cartridge, that the extractor tears through the rim of the cartridge. Usually that's a function of the weapon being extremely dirty and a little spritz of oil um, while you're participating in an event, or sometimes even water if you don't have oil available, um, will help clean things up and prevent that. But uh, in the instance that you do do that, you open the breech, the cartridge doesn't come out, and you can tell that the ejector, or the extractor rather, has ripped through the rim of the cartridge, it's an easy fix. Go ahead and empty the magazine, be sure there are no cartridges in there, and then with a dowel, wooden dowel, or if you're out at a reenactment, you can ask your sergeant uh, there in the line to lend you their ramrod under the supervision of an officer, Use the small end of the ramrod or your dowel, stick it right in the barrel with the action open and just give it a little tap. That's all it takes. The car spent cartridge will fall right out uh, and you're ready to go again. But give it that little spritz of oil because that will help uh, 
prevent that situation. In summary, the Spencer rifle is not the easiest or most user-friendly rifle to fire blanks out of. It was never really intended to do that. But if you follow some of the modification tips that I've given you, and you keep in mind those troubleshooting tips, you can have a fun and exciting experience shooting blanks out of your Spencer.